What's up guys? This is the Rofman and I am back to bring you to the first episode of a brand new campaign as the Spaz the Pirates. And you guys know I suck at naval battles, but you make me pick, make you force me to play as the pirates nonetheless. Um, so we're going to play, play World Domination. Um, if I can get to 30 regions, then I will, uh, <laughs> then I'll decide whether or not I go for full World Domination or not. Um, I have set my Darth Maud launcher to Darth Maud cost, Custom to get the pirates to show up. And I'm also playing with the additional units mod, but I don't know how well that impacts it. Uh, we're going to play campaign difficulty on normal, because I've played on hard before, and you get quite you get stomped really early on like, by the major powers. I think within about the first dozen turns or so, I had a full stack from the Netherlands and a full stack from Sweden just land off the coast of Antigua, which is, and I just couldn't stop them because I had about six units of militia in my entire army. Uh, anyway. Let's crack on. And this should be... Well, it should be pretty interesting because as a faction, we are pretty darn poor. Um, we earn 10. <laughs> 10 gold per 10 attacks. Most of it's all coming from other sources. And our income is currently negative. I could probably drop my, pirus, my policy down really low for the lower classes because I want to try and spur some growth. Um, and yeah, I think we've got to check our ministers. So you plus one plus one treasury plus one management plus one happiness plus one treasury that cancels out plus one army. So I think you are best placed for treasury duty. You're just a plus. You're just a four star basic. You are. Four star basic because of the Jahas reputation, plus one for my navy. So you're going to go there. You're just pretty rubbish. Mr. Fenn, Francis Fenn, plus one management, plus one management, plus one justice, plus one happiness, plus one treasury. I'm going to go for you to be my justice minister. And then Benito Baker is a, just a standard four star level minister who will replace my head of government. So now everyone is at least contributing something. Which is quite nice. Um, I cannot. Tr uh, well, so I'm, I'm producing sugar, but I am not able to trade or do anything with it because I have no no diplomatic relations with any any other country. It's possible that down the line they may talk to me, but I don't think that's realistic. Um, but so as you can see, I can't actually click anything, and the trick here is to use lists. So when you get to your list, you can click on your fleet, and when you move a fleet, it becomes visible. So I'm probably going to jump, drop a, drop um, a sloop into port here, a sloop into port up in Antigua, and then a sloop can sail north. So you can see you've got this trade, this trade, a trade route here that goes to Punta, that combines with a bunch of other trade routes to the north. So as you, as seems fairly logical, this trade route is the combination of both of these. So you're probably going to want to raid here first and foremost. We're going to want to combine those fleets. So let's get you over here as well, because you've got a galleon. Let's just make you go there for now, because you're actually go here, because that's that Spanish fleet. Okay, sail around them. I don't really want to engage until I got a bit more strength. There's my other fleet. You can see it handily there. So then you chaps go over to Simon Ansel. Combine your forces. Good. So as you can see from our income slide. Oh no, it's because we've got our other fleets, don't we? Yes. So Frederico Calles is in the East Indies and you want to get him out of here. Because... The Dutch destroy them really, that, that fleet really quick. Mr. Piras is in the Straits of Madagascar again. Not quite so bad, but I like I prefer to mass at the at West Africa. So there we go. So you chaps raid. So I don't know if we are you know, slightly positive. Once my other fleets get into position, they should get better. 
And what you end up wanting to do, I'm pretty sure, is to say, okay, let's just recruit. A race built galleon is probably the a good intermediate because it's actually slightly more expensive than a sloop, but it's a bit more survivable. So let's get two in both of my ports. Let's build two race built galleons because we want to try. We need to bear in mind that our finance comes from raiding at the moment. We don't actually have a lot of cash. And to get basic roads in Antigua and Trinidad, you don't want to upgrade this building because it doesn't provide anything except the option to recruit howitzers, which you you can't get yet because you have no universities. Uh, my university target is going to be Punda because it gives us a town fairly quickly. But I want to probably okay so what I want to do is occupy and maybe get a governor's residence because it's cheap but let's recruit in both of my areas uh, a buccaneer and a militia a piece so in two turns I have a small force we can go take Martinique because it's quite cheap and it's right here but we do want to try and focus on these territories down here because they have gold and Dime, uh, more gold and gems. So I want to go down here, take these two territories, then try and jump on Punda to get hold of the craft workshop and destroy it and replace it with a school because I would like to try and get some better um, naval technologies. More ships. I mean, to be honest, I could probably just send these guys out raiding. Stay, Just stay nearby and raid. No, they're asking to get um, picked off. So they're going to stay where they are. We're still slightly positive. That's probably going to change as we get our troops. That's all we can do. Um, we might see some naval engagements. But I'm largely hoping that we are ignored. Uh, fifth rate, sixth rate, and a sloop versus... This, uh, yeah, I can't win that. A better, a better sailor than me could win that, but I'm going to dice roll it. Ah. So they're going to sink those ships. They're going to chase them down, most likely. Oh, they aren't. Oh, they're going to go for my other fleet. Same thing again. I don't think I could beat them because I'm rubbish. The fleet is lost. There we go. <laughs> so his first engagement's pretty dodgy so those ships that are currently in up near the uh, near the edge of the map I'm going to shift those over to West Africa and I need to keep recruiting square um, race built galleons and galleons because galleons are they're like a, a quite a, a reasonable mixture between cheap but good staying power so we are still slightly ahead 500 ish because we've lost all those ships we don't have to pay for them anymore so Mr. Ansel, get over to West Africa. Fleet destroyed. Fleet arrives. We have more ships. We can't take any of these. Well, we can take them, but we can't actually do anything with them. So we're just going to combine our fleets here. Hasn't actually changed our... There we go. I had to re... Re-raid it. So we're up to 2,000-ish per turn. Um, let's take my race built galleon happy delivery. Let's get them out there. Let's get ooh, small oh, that's those French Spanish ships. They're on their way to the trade zone. Or to the um the trade the trade theatres. So I am gonna let them go and just get my race built galleons over to West Africa. Because significantly more trade passes through this. Like all of the trade between India and Europe goes through here. So you get a lot more cash. Yes, I mean, they're all a bunch of Jebex, so they're not necessarily great strength. I might get a... One of my general... One of my admirals, sorry, to come back, actually. Joseph Culliford, come back to the Americas. Let's recruit another militia apiece. 
Ooh, maybe. Ooh, that might have been a bad idea. I mean, upgrading my tax doesn't change anything. Uh, I'm going to get some buildings built. A road's going to get upgraded. Well, to be honest, we're not far off of attacking Martinique. We can deal with one turn negative balance. If we can get those ships over to West Africa, we can help beef up our little raiding, our little pirate fleet over there. It would be nice to have a reasonable fleet to try and uh, ca capture individual ships like that, but I don't think we're going to get the opportunity. Those Jebex are just made of paper. Fleet arrives. Two more ships. I have to re-raid. Okay, so now part of the issue is that we're going to... Wait a minute. When did my... Where did my... What? Where have my galleons gone? Those are all Jebex. I am hugely confused. Oh well. Let's assume that something better is happening as a result of those ships going out there. Because they definitely did arrive. Frederico. Oh no, that was the... Oh, okay. Those were the, the sloops, I guess. Oh, I'm confused. When you're confused, just ignore it. It's got basic roads built. We're not going to build better ones because they're just not needed. So let's pick up our little army. Sail over to Antigua. Get them embarked. Bring both the brigs because they've got the movement anyway. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Helps if you actually embark your troops. Could Asp It's a pity they didn't hop on them from the port, but oh well. So we're still slightly ahead. We'll be ever so slightly ahead when we get hold of Martinique. But then I do want to try and next turn jump on them, pick up these two militia units that are being recruited then jump on to uh, the territories down to the south. Okay, we can't do any tech. Hit and turn. Let's see. So what we're going to start to run into is as we're trying to raid trader zones, the uh, as people declare war on each other, and start to blockade each other's ports and stuff, the actual trade income along those trade lines is going to be quite sporadic. Okay, so we've got an admiral. Let's sail him down to have a look. French Guyana. Paramaribo. We have a ship here. Galleon. Hey! Galleon profiteur. Okay, let's get our ship back into port. It's quite nice. It's, so it's best to land in Cinemary and attack Cayenne, then drive north to hit Paramaribo. But first of all, let's go after Martinique with our army. Well, we'll we will win because we've got two militia and two buccaneers compared to their their two unit force. So my militia are going to advance up the centre, pirates push up the flank, and then we will um, attack their centre. Here we go. <laughs> he's a pirate lord, all right. Although he looks like he's had a bit too much uh, rum. Anyway, let's get our troops into position. Troops, militia. Pirates on either flank. Oh my god. <laughs> Very well. Group my pirates together. Crank up the time. I mean, understand, that does kind of make sense, but what's going to happen is that as we, we are going to run just because it'll take forever. 
But as we get into position, we can push them off of their defences. And what you start to see is that your militia are mod moderately good at shooting, but not that great in melee. But the Buccaneers, pretty good melee troops. So that's what we're going to want to utilise. So I'm going to want my... I like the idea of using my militia to fix them in position. Get my buccaneers to catch them as they redeploy. Then we'll destroy them. Hopefully with few losses. I might want to run my pirates up because I want them to be in a reasonable position. There we go, so they're engaging my militia. They're redeploying. Especially as the units don't have bayonets. As they don't have bayonets, our buccaneers are kind of the best melee troops you can get in a the theatre. Huzzah! And then some backup from my militia itself will really help out. There we go. Once we knock out either the armed citizenry or the garrison militia, they are acquitting themselves nobly. However, Buccaneers are pretty darn good at melee. My militia aren't, but they do provide a critical mess. There we go, my pirates are running in, attacking the civilians. Yeah, my militia aren't doing so great. So it looks like I need the advantage is to, I need to try and win against the armed um, citizenry fairly quickly and then pivot across to back up my men, my other men in the other battle. So I think the only thing to do really is just to uh, speed up time and see how things play out. Because this is all just becoming a big scrum. As soon as these guys start to waver, or my guys on the other flank start to waver, just a real scrap. There we go. There we go. Now that's. <laughs> Bit nervous there. Never in doubt, never in doubt. <laughs> okay. So that is Martinique taken. Let's repair the uh, infrastructure. Let's replenish my, our troops. Let's build basic roads and let's try and get some... Ooh, actually, let's get get Mr. Culliford over there. Get my fifth ray out. Or my um, brig out. Embark them. Do a swap here. Get my militia over the board ship at Guadeloupe. So then we can sail and attack the French here at Cayenne. Although, to be honest, we are just going to suffer from our tax revenue slowly shrinking. But I don't really think there's a better way to do it. Let's hit end turn. Could really do with... Oh no. No. Oh my guys. What? So where did... I'm sure I sorted all these, but whatever. My race book galleon's going to get... Going to get plucked to, pit, plucked to bits. 
Oh well, at least they weren't actually contributing anything and they're weakening the Dutch force there. I mean, they are just snapping up my ships, but... Oh uh, well, these things happen. Yeah, even yeah, I hate the pirates so much. <laughs> oh, I do like having that tax pay tax base to build on, and it's going to be difficult to get hold of. A thousand next turn. Fleet destroyed. Fleet destroyed. Fleet destroyed. Well. Make sure we keep this alive. So back in the Americas. Can't do anything. You're replenishing. I'm going to sail down and hit KN. There's not really a lot else we can do. Born to hit KN, hit Paramaribo, then take that uh, Dutch territory at Curaçao, and then use that to try and build up our empire a bit with some research. Then maybe go for Caracas. It, the, the thing that Caracas offers is that because it has no ports, if we capture it, it doesn't impact any possible trade opportunities. So you should be embarked. I'm fairly sure you guys can leave Martinique. If not, we could just exempt them from tax. Sail down to Cayenne. The French have fortified it with an extra unit. But we are going to bring it to bring it to heel. I just want to make sure I'm doing other things as well. Yeah, there's just not a lot that we can really do elsewhere. Just, Can't really stop the bleeding. Build a sloop just to make sure no one can easily take one of my territories, even though right now the territory doesn't even pay for their guard ship. Let's take Cayenne away from the French dogs. I want to then I want to replenish this army and get ready to push against Paramaribo and try and build some basic mines. Because I know we need we get all of our money from trade, but right now we're on the bones of our backside right now. Anything is better than nothing. So our militia are going to form our main line. Our buccaneers are going to be pushing the left combined together. And we're going to walk because um, chances are that run was ill-advised all the way up the map. So fortunately leaving a militia unit back to cover the rear, which is great for us because it means that we can just focus on destroying the rest of their force piecemeal. Get our buccaneers to push the flank. Get the militia involved. So it's the 6th Regiment, the Firelock Armed Citizenry. Let's run the last bit in. You are going to be within range of the Firelock Armed Citizenry. That's pretty nice. So they are not massing, but they're getting, they're getting closer. 1st Regiment of Militia will be able to open up. Push my pirates up. So you guys should be well placed to engage the firelock arm citizenry. They must be aware that they're being flanked. For it's really good they left a militia unit back there to protect the flank. I want to see the pirates shoot a pistol volley. That's what I want to see. So we've got their uh, 
militia outflanked. Go on, you men, draw your sidearms. It's not bad. So you men focus that unit of militia. These two units of militia start to advance against the enemy. Okay, that unit's shattered, so make sure we break the armed citizenry. Advance up our line. Okay, they're both shattered. Great. Pirates get over onto the left flank and speed up time, because we don't care about killing them, we just make sure that they're gone. Very handy that we killed their general as well, and it's also very nice that we achieve that with fairly limited losses. But once I take these territories, I really do want to take Punda to try and get hold of some basic economy tax and military tax, naval To be honest, we need it all. We need it all. So you guys are going to push that flank. You guys are going to push that flank. The pirates are going to push around over the hill. Then once they get within range, they're going to start to do damage to our chaps in the front. So everyone else start running, because the 4th Regiment are going to take the brunt of their fire alone. The pirates are light infantry at least, so they should be a bit better at running. Counter battery fire, but it's not counter battery fire. Beginning to engage, but it hasn't worked. Get these units around the rear. Yeah, you engage them with pistol shot. They're not actually shooting at my pirates yet. Come on, when they abandon their position, that's when we get them. They're engaging my men that are pushing around the flank. Got new men. They are now surrounded. You might be able to fight quite handily, but you're surrounded by the enemy. So I'm hoping I can knock them out fairly quickly. And hoping that their the loss of their general will make cause them a to to break significantly sooner than they ordinarily would. And they have, and our forces are in quite good condition. Good stuff. So that is one of the Brazilian territories taken. I'm sure because you are French, we can leave. We well, were French. So we're at 1100. Again, they are shrinking, but once their port's back up and going, they're going to be shrinking less. But we need to knock out Paramaribo, which is the more wealthy, wealthy one significantly, because we don't have enough money to build a gold mine. But we're going to take out... It's too bad we can't get them now. Um, we're giving them a turn to reorganise. But I do want to start getting some basic technologies to improve the growth, improve the growth rate of my um, territories. That's really important to me. Really, really important to me. I mean, Curacao will be very unhappy about it because they'll have a school. It might be a low-level school and stay a low-level school for a long time. But I don't think there's another way to really do it. So you men can march up to Paramaribo. Mortar is big. We're going to have to run. So we can't even recruit um, cool 
Native units. That's a bit, a bit lame. Oh yes, yeah, so I told you about the additional units mod. The reason why I don't know how it works, or how it could work, is because normally I do this. Click the Army Staff College and then scroll down, but for whatever reason it doesn't let me scroll. So I don't know whether that means there is nothing it provides. It could well be nothing. But then again, a barracks, an army in Cameron will allow us to build something. I don't know. Remains to be seen. We're at 500 cash, so I wonder if that means... Yes, my lord. I think we have to keep raiding every turn. Because otherwise the army, they stop doing it, which we can't afford them to do. Um, but, let's attack Paramaribo, which is an incredibly wealthy region. 3,000. And that will be, be very good for us. And then we can regroup, sail for Curacao, take the territory, knock down the uh, industrial building. It's very tempting to keep it, but we have to knock it down and build a school because we might be pirates but we gotta learn so we're gonna be running like madmen okay so militia run up here second light foot kill those mortarmen Fortunately, they're deploying a militia unit behind cover. The second light foot are being bombarded. Fortunately, they have left us enough. They have left enough of a gap between their units to allow us to simply charge them with melee troops. We can surround the armed citizenry. And destroy them with musket fire. <laughs> They're too close for your mortars now. And this is their general. There we go. Kill those mortar crews. Firelock arm citizenry will not stick around for very long. So they they are going to come back realistically. Get my light infantry to try chase them down. Field artillery is shattered, so they're going to hold on the right. Wait till my militia get in, and then we're going to jump on the jump on the enemy militia to the rear. Yeah, they're probably going to come back, so that's why I'm going to keep attacking them with my pirates. Try and catch up with as many as we can, and kill them while it's easy. Easy er. Okay, there we go. They've abandoned their position. Get my pirates up onto the high ground. Keep on killing the firelock armed citizenry. Yeah, you guys can walk. My pirates are still going after them. I want to see them shatter really but they've not they're not going to lose enough men for that to happen. So really the third regiment need to do some serious work. Let's get my pirates up there quickly. I'm not anticipating great things, but if I get my pirates up there and just give them a volley with pistol shot. Now your job is just to pursue them, to keep them on their toes so their morale doesn't ever recover. Oh, there they go. Excellent. That's the third regiment of militia destroyed. And Paramaribo secured. So I'm kind of hoping is the Dutch get destroyed and no one ever comes after these territories again. So what is tempting is where's my fifth rate? Joseph Culliford. Their galleon is knackered. 
but I'm so browbeaten. <laughs> um, I still don't think I could probably beat them. 500 and a 500 gold per turn, 2,800. That will give me license to do some wiggle room. Uh, yeah, there we go. There, their ship's pulled back. Probably pull back to um, Curacao. I'm offering Tri no, Trinidad's the one region I need. Trinidad is my victory condition. Although it does go to show that they will open up um, diplomatic channels with me just on their terms. I can't make them do anything. So get Brig Poseidon over to Demerara, Cinemary. Let's build a sloop. Let's upgrade this gold mine. Let's get this going. Let's send a brig over towards Punda. Pretty weak. One militia plus garrison, so we want to replenish as quickly as possible and get over there. 2600. Let's make sure my ships are raiding. 2600 is correct. At some point, these guys will get wiped out because they are. That's. They're just Zebex. Well, they could get a more firepower. Oh, they're not terrible. Um, but the gold mine's definitely the right call, I think. Because it really drives up the money we get from Cayenne. Even though we are losing cash at this particular moment. I think we're doing okay with our rushing. Well, I am very, very tempted by Curacao. Because it does give us our first actual main territory. You got roads, you can get dirt roads. Let's get a sloop here and let's go back to Puerto de España and build a galleon. Let's start to try and build up our ships. Start to try and build up. Hey, this guy lost morally impaired. Nice work. Plus one navy, plus one happiness to lower classes. That's pretty good. Plus one man. Okay, you're quite useful. You're not quite so useful anymore. Plus one management treasury. Plus one management army. It's your four star army. Hungarian riding master. Well connected mistress. Sorry. Honest plus one management. Again, you're not bad for the navy. Plus one navy. It's your five stars for the navy, same as this guy. But you increase happiness for the lower classes, and they're the ones we really want to kind of keep in, keep it, keep in, keep on our good side. Plus, we get these chaps here. Bon Vivant is plus one lower classes. Okay, so you're definitely the best one to replace as our head of government. Good. So you're recruiting a sloop to transport this force of Paramaribo over to Punda. Let's hit end turn. Bear in mind, we are... We're, we're a glass cannon at the moment. <laughs> it would take no effort from almost anyone to just wipe us out. They want Dutch Guyana for peace. That's really bad because it means that the Swedish are looking at us. They're interested in what we're doing. We don't want them to be interested in what we're doing. I don't have e capital to build a proper pirating navy. So we've got our... Okay, I think our guys have stopped um, raiding. Oh no, the income of the trade route's just gone down massively. War declared between the Ottomans and Austria. War declared between Spain and Portugal. That's our raiding... Let's get 
I'm assuming you guys can leave because you're yeah, good. So you're getting the basic basic roads. You can get a governor's residence. Embark my army aboard ship. Sail. Land off of the coast of Punda. Just deposit your army. Not interested in anything else. Let's get you guys back to here. Uh, you guys can raid the 13 colonies trade route right here. Again, squeeze out a few extra coins from raiding. And Mr. Dampy can attack Punda. Then we'll have Kralenjik, however you pronounce it. We can start to recruit, well I want to recruit some basic philosophical, philosophical technologies to try and create some upward pressure on our economy rather than downward pressure. It won't be much, but I want to start. I want to try and pivot. Yeah, <laughs> should not have done that. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Catalan, Rio Felipe. Yeah, just book it, Brig. See how well they're how long they're willing to chase us for. All the way, apparently. Very well. The fleet is lost. Very well. They captured it and sold it for cash. Yeah, taking Curacao will be quite... That would be a significant win. Oh god, they could have gone for... Got you as well. Okay, let's get a logging camp built. Logging camp just adds flat wealth growth. Um, but before we do anything else, we're going to want to take Mr. Dampy and attack Punda. Same, same um, plan as last time. Swarm up, knock out the mortars surround and engulf the remaining troops then we'll knock this territory knock the uh knock the industrial building down replace it with a basic school keep this territory tax free and fortunately because it's dutch it's protestant and we're protestant as well so we've not got that pressure from military uh well, not, not not military from um religious unrest which is nice So I want everyone to run, because mortars are particularly devastating from a morale standpoint. So we need to close the distance to the guns as quickly as we can. The shells are going up, and they're going to aim at the 3rd Regiment of Militia. Just run and close the distance. we get close enough, their mortars can't actually hit us. Pirates get in the woods with an idea of hiding. There we go, we're within, we're, we're within mortar range. So when you guys destroy the destroy the mortars with volley fire, there we go. They're broken. Pivot our fire. My pirates are going to have to advance. Advance into pistol range. So unfortunately the 4th Regiment are wavering. It's not ideal. So I'm engaging the armed citizenry with pirates. 
because they've already shown some morale upset. You men charge into them as well. You men push to surround and destroy them. They're wavering, so push my pirates in. Hopefully the pirates can break them. Push around. There we go, the militia are broken. We've surrounded the armed citizenry. We're going to lose a bunch more men over there than we would like to. Okay. Militia chased on their militia, my pirates chased on their pirates. It just comes down to how quickly we can kill the armed citizenry. Bayonets would be crazy handy if we're having to rely on this more melee oriented strategy. But it looks like we're starting to see the armed citizenry weaken their position. There we go. These units taken down and this territory is ours and has fallen to the pirate lords so out you go matey boy so destroy this building repair the governor's barracks just to provide a bit of oppression and a bonus tax income Let's replenish our army. I mean, to be honest, my brig and fifth rate could probably... Well, yeah, I should probably do that, really. Take my fifth and a galleon to go attack Dominic Warley, considering his fifth is pretty... Well, his galleon's pretty badly damaged. So we will capture it and bring it into pirate service. And we're starting to build up a little force that can sail around and snap up bargains. That's what I mainly would like. Is to build a pirate, build a, have a force of ships that, whose job it is to sail out there and snap up these lone, lone wolves. If they're any good, bring them into the fleet. If they're not any good, um, sell them for profit. So Mizier and Terracotta. Terracotta Marmot. That's a pirate ship, all right. Profiteer Galleon. So they've lost a lot of their guns. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. We're going to pirates the Caribbean, this mother. Because <laughs> ultimately, they've only got 21 guns left entirely. It's going to be a perfect pirates the Caribbean moment, I admit. <laughs> but here they go. So they're gonna be sorry. We've only lost a gun. Continue the dance. Profiteer he is exposed. Higher broadside, a little bit more left. Mm. 
Yes. Bring in the galleon. <laughs> yes. Good. Because it's a galleon, galleons are useful. We're going to bring them in. Bring them into service. We could gain a grand prize money for it. But I would rather bring her back into Puerto de España. Understood. And repair. 1600 this turn. Let's see if it's to do any trading shenanigans at play. No, we are trading. As you can see the cannonball. We're right pirating. As you can see the cannonball smoke. But I do like to recheck. 1600 is our limit. Is our That's our level. Um, let's get this brig out to Martinique. So we're going to knock down this. We're going to rebuild, the, replace the uh, government building. Maintain the trading port, because even though we don't trade, it does earn us um, town wealth, which is then taxed. Yeah, that was, that was an old fleet destroyed message. But I would like to go for Curacao, because Curacao fairly valuable. It does give us a front line with New Spain, though, which I'm not so... Which might be a bad idea. We might be better off to continue island hopping and go for Santo Domingo. But I do like the idea of having a capital centre, if that makes sense. A large bill, a large territory which we control. So let's recruit a sloop to occupy the port. Let's get you back into Punda. We can probably stand to add another militia and another pirate unit. Three, 340 gold a turn replenishment just to make sure. Oh no, hold on. That knocks, so we can't, that stops us from building the school. Damn it, we have to wait one more turn. Uh, do, 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 do. Send our galleon over to have another look at, Cur at Caracas. Gun, native bows, militia. Near doable. Cayenne could do with the governor's residence. If we add on that next turn, we're on to 3700 ish, maybe 3800. So we can afford to upgrade you to a governor's residence to try and stem the bleeding slash improve our tax rate. So, so, so. Let's get our school built next turn. That would be a good idea. Like I said, I know they'll hate it. It's going to add on six clamour for reform to the point where, let's see how that impacts us leaving. Plus 13. We can handle that. But I would like a bit of volume. 2800 a turn next turn. Sweet. We well, yeah, would like a little bit of extra capacity when we go after Caracas. Because what's their tax rate? Tax rate's not great. Shrinking quite a lot. Does con trade goods do still contribute to region wealth just through to, just through tax, way, not through trade? Sit and turn. The main reason why I want to scale up is because I am very much aware that once we attack Caracas, we have a front line with New Spain. Or do I just say nuts, nuts to it and go for Santo Domingo? Might not be a bad idea. Okay, let's use this sloop over here to scout out Santo Domingo. Still ship shape. It would be an easier capture. Hmm. 
certainly you do have towns that grow down the line, do you? Then you've got Santo Santiago de los Caballeros. But then again, you have two ports, which will take forever to to grow. I think it might be better to try and go after Santo Domingo. No, not forts. Mm -hmm. Still not tempted by roads because you haven't got the money. But this army definitely does take Caracas. At the very least, with Caracas, I'll be able to see what I can and can't build. Um, hmm. You should get the basic. You should get the one, the, the next level up. Government building. We probably want to build a galleon or a flight. They're all pretty, both pretty similar. One trades firepower for for accuracy. Let's get a flight. 2500 next turn. Nothing immediate I can upgrade. Um, hmm. Foot to sea. Ready and waiting. Territory's pretty undeveloped. Shrinking massively. But I think it's got to be... See, this is a real puzzler. Because an option is to go, just to start knocking out islands. Take Santa Domingo, take Port Royal, Havana, Nassau. I might do that, because at least it, I'm not going to be involved in a frontline war. That's probably going to be the better call, I think. So let's get all of you guys embarked. Hey, they've not got their port covered, so you can just go whoop. They, they got some cavalry, which could be a concern. Uh, let's try and get Punda covered by a sloop, because sloops are well, they're much of a muchness, but they're cheaper to buy. Settlement under siege. Then... I think, looking at the timer, I'm going to end the episode here as we go and attack Felipe de Medon Medonca. Um, looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for hopefully the capture of Santo Domingo. Cheers, everyone.